Throughout the centuries, there have been many different execution methods used to inflict death onto a condemned prisoner. Some of the methods used even included animals, such as elephants, that would crush someone to death, and also horrific weapons such as axes and swords. Beheading and hanging, drawing and quartering was made infamous during the medieval and Tudor period, with kings such as Henry VIII ordering the executions of two of his wives and some of his closest friends. There was a Tudor monarch who became infamous for her use of one in particular execution method. Mary I, the eldest daughter of Henry VIII, became known as Bloody Mary for her horrific heretical burnings of Protestants at the stake. Burning at the stake was a horrendous and traumatic death, and often those people who would flock to witness executions would be disgusted by what they would see. Join us today as we look at one of history's most brutal execution methods, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Death by burning was a horrific execution method used throughout history, and it was used for centuries. There were many examples of burning alive used in ancient Egypt, and it was linked to the idea of showing no mercy. In Egyptian times, some women were even burned to death who committed adultery, and those who were involved in plots were also burned at the stake. It was also written that Celts would burn humans alive in the form of druidic sacrifice, and the practice was linked to the idea of giving sacrifices to the gods throughout the centuries. But in Christian countries, it was used to burn those who were considered religious criminals or heretics. Burning heretics was used strongly during the Spanish and medieval inquisition in Europe, and the punishment was written into law. In England, Lollards were burned in this way for over a hundred years, and there were even recorded accounts of many Jews being burned throughout the medieval times. The persecution of Jews occurred centuries before, and massacres resulted in Jews being burned alive. In York's Clifford Tower, many were trapped inside the castle building, and this was then set on fire, and resulted in the deaths of dozens of the city's Jews. In 1540, a Jewish man in Halle in Germany, Johannes Pfefferkorn, was charged with impersonating a priest and was tortured and killed. He was lashed on a pillar, and then a ring of glowing coal was placed around him, and this turned to fire, and he was pushed towards it and was slowly roasted to death. The Spanish Inquisition continued with the heretic burning, and it's believed that between 30,000 to 50,000 people succumbed to this fate, being burned at the stake because of the Inquisition. In many different towns and cities, dozens of people were being burned each month, and things continued as the influence of the Inquisition spread. One of the most famous accounts of an individual being burned at the stake was Joan of Arc, the heroine of France. During the 100 Years' War, she led the fight back for the French against the English and lifted the siege of Orléans, but after capture, she was handed over to the English, who tried her and then burned her at the stake. Many believed that they had burned a saint that day. Those who wished to change and reform religion also incurred the same fate, for example John Frith and William Tyndale, who worked on translating the Bible. Both of these men were eventually burned, and many during the 16th century became martyrs in this way. But it's during the reign of Bloody Mary I that the punishment became synonymous with her reign and rule over England. Mary, when she came onto the throne, had to deal with the fact she had to restore Catholicism as a religion of the country over the prospering Protestantism. To reinforce her message, she sought many high-profile executions of Protestants and religious reformers who would not return to Catholicism. In Oxford today, the Martyrs' Memorial marks a site where Bishops Latimer, Ridley and Cranmer were all executed. All three were high-profile churchmen and refused to return to Mary's religion, and they were all burned at the stake. It was said of Cranmer's execution, as the flames drew around him, he placed his right hand into the heart of the fire, calling it the unworthy hand. The flames rose up around him and he succumbed to his fate. Ridley and Latimer were both burned together in this way and were burned on the same stake. It was said that one in particular suffered more with the fact that the smoke did not make one of them pass out. Often to make things quicker and less painful, an executioner could take pity on the alleged heretic and would place a small bag of gunpowder around the neck of the person tied to the stake. With this, the flames would get higher, and the gunpowder would explode instantly, killing the person on the fire. The Marian persecutions continued throughout England, and in this it solidified Mary I's reign as a brutal one, and cemented her place as a feared ruler in history. 
The traditional punishment for women found guilty of treason at the time was being burned also, and this was different for men. The last woman condemned to death for petty treason was Mary Bailey in England, who was sentenced to be burned in 1784, and the final woman sentenced to be burned for high treason was Catherine Murphy in 1789, who was hanged and then burned for coin clipping and coin forgery. She was hanged beforehand, and then her body burned publicly, which cast doubt on the fact that she was the last person burned at the stake. In England, the final case of a woman actually being burned at the stake was that of Catherine Hayes, who died in 1726. She had murdered her husband, and it was said of her death, the fuel being placed around her, and lighted with a torch, she begged for the sake of Jesus to be strangled first, whereupon the executioner drew tight the halter, but the flame coming to his hand, in the space of a second, he let go, when she gave three dreadful shrieks, but the flames taking her on all sides, she was heard no more, and the executioner, throwing a piece of timber into the fire, it broke her skull, where her brains came plentifully out, and in about an hour or more, she was entirely reduced to ashes. As mentioned, it was also a common punishment for witches, and following witch hunts, often women were burned. In England and Wales, the preferred execution method for this was hanging, but it was estimated that roughly 50,000 people were executed for witchcraft in Europe, with many of them being burned alive. Another practice linked to burning alive is sati, used on the Indian subcontinent. This involved a woman setting fire to herself following her husband's passing, by jumping on her deceased husband's funeral pyre. This emerged in the 400s, and it was used a lot in India. The East India Company, when they were involved in the country, then began to compile accounts of sati, and they were around 600 women a year being burned in this manner, and later the practice was banned and outlawed. There were other methods closely linked to burning, such as the use of the brazen bull. This was a hollow metal structure shaped like a bull, in which a condemned criminal would be forced inside of. This would then be placed over a fire, and slowly the person inside would roast to death inside the hot structure. Some cultures even poured molten metals and compounds down a criminal's throat and ears, which would cause immense pain. It was said that one Spanish conquistador in the Americas in the 16th century had been captured by natives and had molten gold poured down his throat as the onlookers mocked saying, Eat gold, Christians. It was said of burnings at the stake that, if the fire was small, the convict would burn for some time until death from heat stroke and loss of blood plasma. When this method of execution was applied with skill, the condemned body would burn progressively in the following sequence. Calves, thighs and hands, torso and forearms, breasts, upper chest, face, and then finally death. On other occasions people died from suffocation, with only their calves on fire. Some records report that victims took over two hours to die. Being burned at the stake has gone down in history as one of the most brutal and barbaric execution methods. One saving grace for someone being killed was that often they would pass out due to the smoke, and that they would be unconscious in their final moments. There were accounts when burnings went wrong, which resulted in someone being slowly roasted to death in a rather terrible scene, and there were some blundering executioners who struggled to light the fire, prolonging the ordeal, and also prolonging death. It was a sentence closely linked to religious crimes, and those who dared to think differently during times of oppression. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.